The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Hey everybody, welcome to my brother, my brother, me and invite you for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middleest brother, Travis McElroy. Wah, wah, it's me, the sweet baby brother, Griffin McElroy. I am so sorry that I was late uh, recording the podcast. Like uh, 20 minutes late, 40 minutes combined between me and Travis. Yeah, wasted. That's just 40 wasted minutes of our minutes. life we won't get back. What could we have done with that 40 minutes? Uh, knowing you, you were probably like watching old episodes of Sister Sister on Hulu or something. I'll have you know I was eating cold fried chicken over my kitchen sink like a monster. And I was watching old episodes of Sister Sister on HBO Go. <laughs> uh, I was taking a cold shower. Uh, that's my new thing. If you haven't tried it, I would highly recommend it. Very bracing. Very good for the heart the creativity uh, i do that very, as well it's also very good for your skin and for your why do you start that trav uh i started about uh, about eight months ago yeah do you only take cold showers well what i do is i start off warm and then turn the, the uh, temperature that down james, that james bond shower do that james bond shower that's correct griffin are you trying to get uh, rid of some hard-ons you two just got chronic hard-ons you're trying to squash <laughs> i do that's- but it's not connected <laughs> It's actually, that's actually I, I'm, I think, an old wives' tale that taking the cold shower in, increases one's sexual potency. No, it can't, and it won't. It does. It, it, it gives you better it, boners because it freezes them in place. And it it freezes the blood in there? It and freezes so it's, the blood in your bon- uh, boner sickle. This is the worst introduction we've ever done. Because we're just uh, talking about frozen boners. This was your idea, Griffin. You were curious about the cold shower lifestyle that Travis and I are living. And I'm here to tell you, it. I uh, almost every day you switch it to cold. I get in it like lukewarm, and then I just go mm-hmm. full cold shower the whole time. Uh, it feels at first it feels like you're gonna die. I'm dying, but then it's like I'm alive. Mm-hmm. You come through it whole. You live whole, in that pain. Uh, you just exist you live in, in it, it, and then you can't feel it anymore. Um, but how do the ghosts talk to you? Sorry, what? How do you? Oh, sorry, not talk. But how do the ghosts get messages to you? Oh, without the steamy mirror. I got yeah. you. The this, oh. this mirror gets steamy from the hot shower, and then the ghost is like, hey, Griffin, have a good day. Love your grandpa. Love your grandpa. <laughs> that's, sorry, that's, it's not denoting who it's from. Love your grandpa. It's like, By the way, we're out of salsa. Can you pick some up? <laughs> <laughs> Love your wife, Rachel. I want you to do two things for me today. I need you to run to H-E-B. I need you to get some salsa, preferably of the mild variety, and also go love your grandpa. Ooh. <laughs> Boo, it's Ooh. me, your wife. <laughs> I can't believe your wife was Grandpa Ghost catfishing you no. the whole time. You misunderstand. She just <laughs> wants me to love my grandpa. <laughs> okay. Uh, and bro- also to go get some salsa because we are plum out. Are you completely plum out, out or do you have like the dregs at the bottom, but nobody really wants the dregs because there's like one one tomato chunk in there? No, it's not. I'm not worried about the tomato chunks. I'm worried about the, the Tostito residuals there's one sad chip in there that's just been marooned from his flock. here's here's the other thing about salsa yeah um but but seriously i do want to say one other thing about salsa <laughs> <laughs> don't you guys hate it when you see a jar of flavored salsa like some sort of exotic salsa like maybe a mango habanero salsa oh, and you think ew. oh my god that's gonna be great and you eat it and you're like well that was good but now i've condemned myself to this salsa for you just want your buds want just like normal that's salsa. Why that's only a party salsa, Justin, because you're basically tasking your group of friends to take on the beast with you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't want to go lightning. this alone. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's it's yeah. It's a Sunday, you just got out of church and you're just looking for a sensible dip. And all that you've got is a, a, a sweet salsa. And that's oh. when on Saturday night, that that's and it's party time. That's what you want. Let me hit you guys with this. As long as we're talking about salsa, one last sort of salsa avenue I want to take us down. Hop in your rowboats through the lovely avenues of salsa Venice 
where the alleyways are just salsa salsa creeks mm-hmm. and we're gonna go on a salsa trip together how about this salsa idea that i've just come up with individual salsa packets like ketchup packets but there's mm-hmm. just a little bit of salsa in there and then you can have whatever kind of fun flavors you want in there are you talking like a little ramekin size or nope. just like literally like a little pouch a little pouch a little pouch i think they have those they're at taco bell and you can take as many as you want oh that's salsa in there idiot well, I mean, it's more like taco sauce. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah, more like taco a sauce. Yeah, different thing. Mm, I'm drinking a tall glass of salsa right here. I, I mean, it's actually more like water. <laughs> you can't just call things. You salsa. can't just call things other things. I'm talking. Uh, this is an original idea. You've made me so upset, and we haven't even started the show. I used to think that uh, the thing about uh, you always think fresh salsa you're gonna make it homemade, right? You're gonna put it in the bullet. I have never thought that. I've never thought you're, that once in my you're adult You're going to think it's going to be so good, get it homemade. And then you just like make salsa at home. It just tastes like garbage. Yeah, it's, it's like really a bad. slurry of shitty vegetables and like, oh, this is from my garden. Really? Because it tastes like It tastes trash. bad. It's almost like there uh, should be a professional version of it you could pay money for that somebody who knows better than you made. Yeah. That's I recreate point. other things in my home. Right. I have brought other things into my home that i've tasted in the outside world that i've enjoyed today i i tried two. this is not a joke i tried two different preparations of candied bacon because i'm trying to find the one that works best Mm -hmm. for me and my family and i am here to tell you the results are private but (laughs) (laughs) well you're still trying to get funding you don't want yeah, to release sure. the results too quickly or else no one's going to pay hey for it. Hey, guys, as long as we're talking about salsa, did I ever tell you about the time that I was in the, my TV's high school, my high school TV news class? And um, I say news, but it was really just like fun fun vids for kids. And uh, I, I tried to make a cooking show using the condiment station uh, at Huntington High School. And that involved, there's one episode where I did try to make salsa using like packets of hot sauce and uh, banana peppers and uh, tomatoes and lettuce. It, I didn't have a whole lot going on. Uh, I didn't have like a lot to work with. Uh, and can I tell you that I failed and what I created is unspeakable. <laughs> now you have IBS. When I was in my TV production class in high school, uh, I was not well liked at all. Uh, everyone thought I was like nobody liked me in my TV production class, uh, which was not a rarity in high school. But it was really pronounced that TV production class, which is somewhere I thought I would fit in pretty well. Uh, but uh, the whole class was run by just like jackbooted hillbilly thugs. And uh, one day I looked in the TV monitor and I saw that they had trained a camera on me and written at the bottom of the TV monitor, Justin is a homosexual. <laughs> I was upset, not to be called a homosexual, that's fine, that's their prerogative, but at the bottom of, the, I didn't know how to make words come up on the screen, so <laughs> I, I didn't even know that was something we could do in class. So I was I was upset about that, because they had a much, like, I thought that my superiority intellectually would carry me, but I didn't even have that to hold over them anymore, because they had all these advanced yeah. video toaster uh, techniques that I didn't I was not privy to. Sure. Um, did they actually use those words, or was it more colorful? No, that's the weird thing about it. It was like a weirdly clinical. Yeah. Like, like it. Yeah. It was like if if one was making a nature documentary mm-hmm, about that's what I was say. about about on the on yeah. the sexuality spectrum. Justin yeah. lands closer to the homosexual side of things. Observe him in his natural habitat, which is getting bullied in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys just want to wrap this whole time? We've gone like nine minutes now without doing a question. We could, yeah, yeah let's, let's keep chat. going. What did that remind you guys of? High school? It, well, when I did, I did there. a hard hitting expose in my uh, high school TV media class about why the third lunch period always ran out of turkey clubs. And when I was yeah. doing it, I fucking felt like I was cracking, cracking this case wide open. And then the the lunch lady informed me that it was because they were very popular, so everybody ate them during the first two lunch periods. I and did. after that, she always held a turkey club for me um, f- that I could eat. She would hide it under the table and then give it to me uh, during third lunch period, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, I did a hard-hitting expose. One day, we all got pedometers in high school, and then whoever racked up like the highest count over the course of a week got a bike. Uh, but there were some kids that would just like sit in class and shake their pedometers to get that number going. So I did a hard hitting expose on pedometer shaking, but it did devolve into just a bunch of jerk off gags, like a bunch of jerk off gags. 
<laughs> One day, uh, when I was in media production in middle school, we had a, 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 a weekly news program for all of Kamak. I think it was WCMS was the name of the show because it was Kamak Middle School and it was the show. And uh, I did some, um, uh, I used to do top 10 lists as sort of a comedy segment on uh, Excellent. D- WCMS. I don't know if you guys have heard about these top 10 lists. Uh, but they were, uh, I guess, kind of ahead of the, maybe ahead of the curve. Maybe I wasn't targeting my audience pr- very well. Uh, maybe it was a little too adult, too grown up. But I eventually was, f- this is, I was fired nice. from doing top 10 lists because they told me that they didn't want to do them anymore. And the next uh, week I'm sitting in class watching WCMS. And what do I see? John Fraley. On the screen, that piece doing a top son of a bitch. ten list, stealing my bit I stole from David Letterman, and just doing it like here are some, and they were like it was all fart gags. There was no nuance, nothing. Now, did Griffin? Did you get to do Kids Mag, or was that just Justin and I? No, I didn't get to do it. I was not invited on the air. I think they knew that I was. I was. Um, my material was a little bit too raw. Kids mm-hmm. Mag was a local kids. A news program that was shown, I think, Saturday mornings, Sunday mornings on WOWK. It's great because I'm really glad that there's filmed evidence of what a giant, giant. Holy uh, shit! What a dingus! Sh- you oh God, man, a minkus! I would say I was, I was a solid minkus. You were minkus con. They had to, <laughs> they had to pay Travis for his life rights to Minkus. Yeah. He, they didn't want a li- lawsuit on their hands, so they it, actually paid him a nominal fee to be able to use the character Minkus in Boy Meets World. I just picture Mom and Dad looking at me while I was watching Boy Meets World, and they were like, he's pretty close, but we could get closer. And then they like took a picture of Minkus and said, give us these glasses and this haircut and whatever shirts you can find that kind of look like this, and then put them on the air. Let's... um. Let's do our thing. No, absolutely not. I refuse. I look. I spent like a half hour looking up Yahoo's, by which I mean going through our, our Gmail and picking my favorite Yahoo's. And I don't want that work to be for naught. Like I already had 20 minutes wasted for me today. Use them next week. They'll keep. I feel like people Let's, are going to get angry if we don't do advice. They can. This is this is I'm showing not telling. I'm showing through my life how experience. to live. It's how to live. How to live. How? Okay. So what have we said? What have we said so far? That's been actual. Don't Take be, cold showers. Don't be a minkus. Take cold showers, invent individually wrapped salsa packets. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Don't be a, don't be, a, but, but do be a minkus, Travis, because you were happy. You were a happy kid. I, you know, my one regret, Griffin, I didn't embrace it. I was a very smart kid. I was in the advanced well, programs, but I well, wanted to be cool. And I was so worried about that, that I didn't just like go on to be a very rich doctor or lawyer or engineer or scientist that, isn't it isn't it funny how like I, I don't think i was a smart kid i think i was really really good at taking tests mm-hmm. and like whenever i talk about like now that i'm an adult and i talk about being in the tag classes and the talented and gifted classes and and i brag i'm bragging um but really i know in my heart of hearts that i just really was psyched to like twice a week play island of the zoom beanies yeah <laughs> right. do a uh, math blaster do some math blaster and I, I i did great at math blaster again i do not think i was Especially smart, I think I was just like dope at video games, and I, I did, I refused. I was, I was defiant against learning anything from the island of the mm-hmm. Zubinis. They were trying to teach me problem solving skills, trying to teach me logic, reasoning, <laughs> morals, and I said, "Thank you, Zubinis, for the lessons, but I will ignore those. I'm just trying to get a high score because I'm a number one, 100 percent gamer." I remember we built uh, a, a toothpick bridges. We yeah. did uh, some mm-hmm. Coke can like balancing scale. I built a toothpick version of Jeff Bridges, and he was my boyfriend for a while. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here's that the thing: cool when, I, when I describe the tag class to people, people often don't believe me that I got into it because of how especially smart I was. Because when I describe, well, we would lay in like a pillow thing and read in the kids' yurt. Yeah, and then we would, get- would we would play Math Blaster, and people were like, "And this was for especially smart kids." I think the more I think about tag, the tag classes we were in. Do we explain that means talented and gifted? Okay, yeah. tag. That's what that stands for. Uh, not smart. Our, not smart. Not listen smart. To the, listen to the Ta- words. Not smart. Talented and gifted. Yeah, they could have called more- it euphemism and euphemism. <laughs> I think I think really that where I think about it, it was more of like a a wedgie quarantine. <laughs> like these kids, these kids are not gonna survive. 
they are not going to live to middle school and we can't lose another one. We have to cordon them off to keep them from the rest of the kids just so they are not nuclear wedgie. Yeah, I, think I, I was going to talented and gifted classes. It was like Tuesday and Thursday. And on Wednesday, I was going to speech therapy. So really just like I was leaving class three out of five days of the week to go be weird. Who's that kid? I don't know. He comes around sometimes. I think he's a ghost. I think he's a minkus. Should, should we bully him? Let's get to it tomorrow. <laughs> Oops. That's Oops, your mistake. You, go. you made We gotta catch him on Monday and Friday. <laughs> See, I gotta set it. Promise me you'll remember this time, guys. You have to remember. This time we'll bully. I would, I would, they would try to bully me. And I'd be like, hold, please, sirs, before you try to bully me, a riddle. You have <laughs> one sheep, one sack of grain, and one wolf, and only two rafts to get them. Oh, oh, no, you're bullying me. It's happening. <laughs> I'm being bullied right Didn't now. Didn't even want to take a, stat, a crack at it, huh? But then by fifth grade, we were all on safety patrol, and that's where you wield the true power. Mm -hmm. Right. Everybody a respects that. <laughs> a safety gun. Uh, it's just for I got fired. I got fired from safety patrol. Did for, you? I was a loose cannon. What I did got you too do? Many temerits. I mouth. I mouthed off to teachers. What the what? Yeah. No, you, no, you didn't. I did. Uh, I was late to like a shit. My it was like my third demerit, and I was late to get out to the corner, and the teacher was like, "You were late," and I was like, "I don't think I was," and that was my third demerit, and I got kicked I, off. I did turn in my badge and sash. I really liked the flag part of safety patrol. That's where you help people cross the street. Did every school have safety patrol and fire patrol? I don't know. I don't know if they did or not. I'm just gonna assume that they did. And I had a big flag that I would use to help kids cross the street, but really it was a bow staff like Donatello had in the Teenage Turtles. Sure. And um, I would I would flail it around and do all kinds of stick, sick like stunts with it. And I realize now as a 28 year old man that maybe I just wanted to be in flag core, but I also wanted a badge. And they don't give you those in flag core. And I know, there's no badges. No. I also think that now most of that safety stuff is done by adults because somebody realized that what they were doing was putting the lives of children into the hands of children yeah, and then sure. sending the children <laughs> with sashes to stand in the middle of the street. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine like the, like, they're children, like they're still chill that you're giving the children the power to stop cars like what are you doing that all right you know, eight year old you... steven you got this right like you can barely tie your shoes but you can like decide when is it safe right okay have fun i remember the one time that this uh this girl walked around my flag what she didn't respect <gasps> the, she didn't respect the staff or the badge she just walked around and I and I tried to stop her and I couldn't, and that's when I realized that authority is meaningless. It's all an illusion, Justin. It's all an illusion. You can build your own bridges. You know, she taught me a powerful lesson that day. Your own Jeff Bridges to be your boyfriend. The uh, uh, so you guys are on safety patrol and fire patrol. Do you guys remember in safety patrol there being a rush on the really good uh, flag staff? Oh yeah, oh for sure. I remember we had some that were like real kind of crummy and threadbare. They were like frayed um, on the end too. Yeah, yeah, and I was I, always afraid to get those because I thought I'd break it accidentally, and that's a big demerit. Was it there. bamboo? It's a juicy one. It was bamboo. Yeah, it was like yeah. bamboo staffs oh, with that a, they attached with, flags to with a blade on the end, a crude bronze blade. I, I will. I will also say uh, I want to say it was Miss Wilson was the head teacher of safety patrol. To her credit, uh, even though I was uh, kicked off of safety patrol, I was still allowed to attend the uh, the yearly event at Camden Park. Celebrating all the safety. Chavez just students. shows up, but f beard all grizzled, fucking Hawaiian shirt half unbuttoned, <laughs> like a ring of cocaine still around his nose. Like, hey, you guys still patrolling? You know, I still got it. I could patrol right now, no she problem. Went down at Camden Park, and all the other safety patrol kids were rounded up, and I was left as like the rogue guy because they were yeah. like, he's not in safety patrol. He didn't even have a sash, but John I still had all the wherewithal. Yeah, I fucking I saved all Swimming of them. Swimming through the log flume, like popping up, slitting a dude's throat, <laughs> <laughs> or uh, safely escorting him through traffic. Yeah, That's another thing. One of those two things. Their yeah. whole plan hinged on running through traffic, and the, the, luckily there was one man there able to stop him. I was captain of the fire patrol one year. Got whoa. Yeah, I got a lot of puts. Travis, <laughs> 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 talk about uh, uh, getting fired from the patrol and uh, 
it reminded me of one of the two times I've ever been fired at a job. One, of course, was because I stole mm-hmm. a copy of Fight Club and got fired from Blockbuster. Among other, Among other Among things. Among other things, Showgirls, the VHS tape. No, it didn't. I had Tommy Red uh, while we were on vacation. He taped that off of HBO for me. I didn't need to get that. You had that. God, this is the second time that we've had to do this intervention on the show before it had a Blockbuster video box. I found I, your, I got stash. A, I I got a, your stash. I got a better, I got a better copy later, but that was like I didn't need it. Um, so I got fired from, do you guys know I got fired at the pub? I used to be, I, you know how I'm always telling jokes and doing like chicanery and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, uh, that job, that, that proclivity for entertainment got, um, it got me a job at the pub, uh, at family fun center as a weekly, as a weeknight DJ on Fridays and Saturday nights. I'd be the one up there spinning CDs and playing everybody's hits from the 50s, 60s, 70s and today. Um, and I, uh, they constantly wanted me to add new stunts, new like tricks and stunts to my repertoire while people were trying to eat some fucking pizza. Yeah, devil, they devil me, sticks and yeah, they wanted me to, yeah. The guy named Chad that I replaced, he later came back. He got a job at Circus City. He like was so he he had a like a way with it. I don't know how he was able to do it, but I think it he turned it up really loud, and sometimes he would light some um he would light the table on fire i remember that yeah. remember that that was like a cool trick yeah bring the demo- people in i got demoted from that position they like called me in they're like would you consider doing some extra stunts like maybe trying to get people to do the ymca or maybe bring in a suit and do a blues brothers oh uh, my God. performance with somebody else and i said no 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 what a crazy thing to ask what a what a crazy thing that you were working in the arcade you were like ticket exchange no man. i got demoted to that oh, to okay. that i That's thought that was you were you were front room you were at the big show I was in the big show, and then I had to watch the big show while I fucking unjammed a token out of the the uh, uh, Sunset Riders machine. Mm-hmm. Sure, they moved you from the place where you did not belong to the place where you absolutely belonged. Because yeah. I, maybe I just loved that job for you. Because one time, me and Alex White rolled up. We we're like, "Hey, we're gonna beat this Sega underwater shooter game," mm-hmm. and oh, yeah, it would otherwise it would cost you one hundred and thirty dollars in quarters mm-hmm. to do that. And you're like, "Let me show you a special switch." And you showed us a special switch, and we played it all day long. It was the best day of my life. So still, or to that day, no, that still, moment. still. Sorry, Rachel. Um, yeah, I liked working back in the arcade. That was a good gig. Did you ever that- steal shit? What? Did you ever steal what shit? I, what am I, I going to steal? I'm going to jeopardize my job so I can take home 30 wacky wall gummy crawlers? Like, <laughs> no, really one of those pencil toppers? Let me say yeah, this. Right? You, work, you work at an establishment uh, where you sell things that you like. And you steal from it, and it's great because now you have the things that you like, right? The ar- the arcade, there's not a lot of stuff that you like there. Unless but, you right. steal like a like a like an arcade game. Well, yes. If you can, st- if you can get the Sunset Riders into your car, then it was never the pubs to begin with. Um, <laughs> it was just waiting for you, right? Um, but what I'm saying is, it's less about what you like and more about like sort of the you steal the fog machine, right? You steal the disco ball. That's thirty thousand tickets. That's that's so like the 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 fiscal sense that that makes, right? Like you know, you're stealing a thirty thousand ticket item. I'm not saying right. you steal a bunch of Tootsie Rolls for five tickets a pop. I'm saying you steal the bike for two hundred thousand tickets, store. right? And you know that like there's no way anybody would ever get that thing. And so like the I don't know I th- I would think I would find that just deeply deeply rewarding. But that stuff was always there. That's like that's like why I couldn't steal the bike. The bike was like part of the decoration I, I think it had a fucking chips logo on it like if you <laughs> if you moved the bike the paint underneath was a different color right, right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely like you couldn't take the bike everybody would notice that did you work at tilt too or am i no 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 i didn't work at Tilt. i applied to tilt but didn't make that but you know what considering sort of financially what became of arcades specifically tilt mm. which is now a primitive store Ugh. at the mall uh uh, that was probably. Do you know I no. live around the corner from a primitives? Really? I could I could spit on a primitives. Let me. I could open up my window right now and spit on a primitives. I wouldn't think Austin would be like a hot spot for primitives. Wait, no, what is primitives? Uh, they sell a lot of things made of cowhide. For us, it's like I don't know, 
sort of a fake pioneer. Like if all the pioneers had like unlimited. Uh, oh, interesting. So a bunch of like uh, corn husk dolls and that kind of thing. Maybe yeah, some yeah, whisk yeah. brooms. See, for for our our primitives, it sells just a lot of things made out of cowhide. Cowhide, a lot of reclaimed wood, a lot of like things that you would see in. Uh, a, a wealthier person that maybe lives up in the hills, but they still want to like keep it real, so they have like a few wooden Native Americans. Oh, see, so like here in Los Angeles, it would be like old film reels and like really vintage cocaine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's hard too because it sticks together and you just oh, get yeah. big rocks of it. I mean, yeah, at that point, it's more of a showpiece than a practical sure. thing, unless you know you get really late at night and all the other cocaine is run out, and then you're like, well, and that's when you yeah, like cra- you crack open your decanter of doca- cocaine. You dig through your fridge and like, there's got to be some cocaine here somewhere. And then you just cut away the moldy part of the cocaine, and it's still good. It's still good, man. It's still that booger sugar, still gonna get you feeling <laughs> so right. Get in the pool. Hey, get in the pool. Did you guys ever do cocaine? In no. College? <laughs> no. I don't think that's like a crazy question. Someone out there is doing cocaine. <laughs> yeah, like, I actually, someone is I doing remember. It. Hey, hey, someone's got to be doing it, right? We're talking about it. Someone's got to be doing Somebody's it. Somebody's going to win. I remember in, in college finding out that a girlfriend of mine had done cocaine at her senior prom. Nice. And it, rap- it like drastically changed my opinion of her like in a split second where I went, oh. And like the I was 21 at the time. And the thought that flashed in my head was, I think she's too hardcore for me. Because she I, had done cocaine yeah. once. I was I have, a babe. I have been places, I have lived places where cocaine was enjoyed irresponsibly. Right. Uh, basically every night. Um, and uh, one time uh, me and my roommate took a Blockbuster DVD back for one of said enjoyers. Uh, do, just do him a quickie favor. And we ran it to the Blockbuster. And when the guy opened it up to make sure the disc was in there, a very small bag of cocaine fell out. Oop, let me grab that. <laughs> To my, to my roommate's credit, to you. my roommate's credit, it was like a like a uh, a three card Monty dealer, like that level of of uh, subtlety. And he just like put his hand on the put his hand like no late fees, but like when he slapped his hand down, there was some cocaine underneath it. My friends Nick and Rusty, who were the guys hanging out in college, uh, they took me under their wing and they did a lot of cocaine. <laughs> Uh, maybe not cocaine, but definitely a lot of weed. I remember well, va- those two aren't and drugs were at had. All. No, I know, but I needed a way into talking about Nick and Rusty because the fun thing about hanging out with those cats is I literally hang out with them every single day. It was like the first place I hung out that wasn't my parents. You know what I mean? Like I would be there constantly after school, and they smoked weed every single day, uh, and oh, I weird. never did. So, but it was a very weird position to be in because. Every day was the same. W- was the same routine of like, well, let's go rent Jekyll and Hyde together again from Blockbuster and get some of those pepperoni pan pizzas from the Super America. And I would like, this is a good day for you guys. Like you're enjoying, <laughs> you're having a fun day today. I was more of like a weed mascot. I think like I was. I began, but then I began to question like, am I maybe? I'm not high, but they do have me around every time. And every time they also eat pepperoni pizza from the Super America and also rent Jekyll and Hyde together again. So maybe am I part of the essential weed? Like, am I the Doritos <laughs> of people? You're the Doritos of dudes. Uh, I mean, that's the only way they can. Maybe they only liked me when they were hot. I don't I don't know exactly. No, what I, no, no, no. Justin, I was everybody likes there. pepperoni pizza all the time. Right. You sure. just like it okay. more when you're high. I, it heightened the experience of hanging out you, me. You could really get every sense of the Justin McRoy. We actually, oh, I actually helped to fund a drug dealing operation. They wanted to get into selling what? weeds. This wasn't Rusty. It was a friend of his uh, whose name escapes me. But he wanted to get into Huba selling Stank. weed. His name is Huba Stank. <laughs> his name was Huba Stank. And uh, I Huba gave J. him. Stank. I gave him some money. On the promise that my investment of money would be returned to me because he would purchase Holy weed and then sell shit. it to me and then give me back more money than I had given him. Are we you didn't... just now realizing like the 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 repercussions for your actions, Heisenberg? We're way past the uh what's it called? Statute you know. of limitations. Statute of limitations on this. Uh and I'm joking, it's a podcast. <gasps> Uh, but the uh, did you get the uh, money uh, back? Yeah. Don't leave me on pins and needles. 
Well, yeah, I made like ten dollars, so nice. worth it. So we what you're saying is selling drugs, good way to go, pays off. Well, no, not selling drugs. I never saw the product. <laughs> just I just, just being a venture capitalist in the drug world. Yes, you weren't. You weren't Heisenberg. You were Gus Fring. You're yeah, like slitting I was at the top throats the... with. A, yeah, you were in charge of the the whole thing. <laughs> and at the top of the at the top of the ladder, Justin Kingpin McElroy. Yeah, can I ask what your name? You're like cool, like drug guy. We had an. I didn't have was. a drug guy name, but we did have a name for our our corporation. It was called Balls Out United. Come on. I was in college. What do you want? From so me? you really were in business with with Hubert J. Stankington. <laughs> It was easy money. Here's what I will say about selling drugs. No, here's what I will say about funding drug sales. It's easy money. Ten, ten of them. It's ten. It's easy ten money units. You know, people say like every time you buy drugs, you're also helping to fund terrorism because of their whole thing. But keep in mind that by buying drugs, you might just be helping me to buy that one last uh, Marvel Legends action figure I needed to complete the <laughs> robot that had like one piece of his body in each package. Remember that? Yeah, I do. I'm sorry. I'm just like, I guess I'm like disappointed in you. Well, I mean, I'm kind of disappointed too because I can retrospect. That's pretty heavy. But at the time, it seemed like a very accessible way. Can I ask how much you put in? Uh, Yeah, like $75, I think. <laughs> it was not a major investment. Were you, wait, were you the sole investor or did you have like a 10% yeah, stake? Yeah, I was the money. I was the money man. If, <laughs> if you let me put it this way, if you're trying to bust this guy and your plan was follow the money, where <laughs> and they, and he, you had like but this is a just court in quarters. Court. Does he work at an arcade? What the fuck? Uh, yeah. Why, why are there pub pizza family fun center tokens in here? Uh, if you follow the money, it would have led to me. You would have thought that I was the kingpin of this organization. It would have been just like two Polaroids on a cork board with just like one <laughs> line between us. Justin, can I say how much money I would pay for a just interrogation video of 19-year-old Justin McElroy with like two cops with like a bright light shining in his face? It's all I want. With his frosted tips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sorry, I've been, I, I've been waiting for an opportunity to talk to you about your frosted tips. They they would have dropped uh they would have dropped a bag of weed on the table and said, "So does this look familiar?" And I could have looked in the eye and say, "I do not know what that is." <laughs> they I said, and then they know. said, "This is seventy five dollars worth of weed because it's nineteen thirty six What if they they could have they could have literally put like construction paper leaves of marijuana. <laughs> In a pile on the table, and they would have said, "Does this look familiar?" And I would have not, li literally, not known if they were messing with me or not. Is this what weed is? I have no idea. I'm just the money man. Speaking of speaking money, of money, yeah. Do we deserve money for not doing advice? Yep. Uh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. We get we get our money no matter what. Uh, we need to buy it. and sell weed. Yeah, uh, my brother, my brother, me is supported in part by Harry's dot com, which hi offers high quality shave, better for your face and better for your wallet. I'm a huge fan of Harry's products. They make great razors. Uh, I love their after shave. They're uh, they have an after shave lotion that I I adore. I love their uh, before shave. The pre-shave. I love yeah, the during that's... shave lotion that you're doing with your left hand while you're shaving with your right. Yeah, that's, it's next level shave maneuvers. You don't want to it's, do this if it's your first time shaving. You it's could like die. you're patching. It's like you're patching drywall. Yeah, but the wall like, is your face. I like the intra shave lotion, which mm -hmm. is between two shaves. When you think I really should shave, you just need to calm down a little bit and not shave. That's a great lotion. I like the anti shave lotion, and sure. it, you put it on your face, and it's like the Santa Claus movie. The hair just grows right back. Uh, speaking uh, of, start... hey, hey listeners uh, who join me on Periscope, thank you so much. I'm just gonna go ahead and cover this one outright. People who keep asking, "How did I grow my beard?" Just didn't shave it. <laughs> Just don't shave it. Just stop uh, shaving. You, but you do want to shave, and Harry's is going to help you do that with a $15 starter set that includes a razor, foaming shave gel, or shave cream, and three razor blades, plus free shipping. $15, that's a great deal, but we're going to make it even better. If you go to harrys.com 
and use the coupon code MYBROTHER. Use the code MYBROTHER, all one word. You can save $5 off that starter set, and which too is often, an amazing deal. A lot of shave stuff is always marketed like directly towards men, which is a mistake. I think that Harry's is good for everybody. Anybody will like using Harry's. It's an excellent quality razor where you get uh, really reasonably priced blades. Teresa uses it. She loves it. So uh, that that code again, my brother, go to harrys.com. Use the coupon code my brother and save $5 off of that starter set. Travis, who's our next sponsor? Oh, that would be a little company called Squarespace. Squarespace is a gigantic company. They're a media. I, Griffin, I was doing, it was ironic. My brother, my brother and me is brought to you in part by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform. I, at this point, is there anybody who, like, what's the Venn diagram of people who listen to podcasts but don't know what Squarespace is? I mean, there's only one sp- website on the internet that doesn't use Squarespace, and it's the Space Jam website that's still in operation after all uh, these years. Can you please just fucking talk about Squarespace? Yeah, Squarespace <laughs> sites look professionally designed regardless of your skill level with no coding required. You can start your free trial site today with no credit card at squarespace.com. Use the offer code MYBROTHER, all one word, and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace, build it beautiful. You know, I use Squarespace to design this week. I actually use Squarespace to make a uh, website for things I bought at Sheets, which you can find at Sheets. Sh- sheets with a z show.com and uh i designed that with squarespace and it look it doesn't look very very good but it looks okay (laughs) it looks better than it deserves it looks better than it deserves and i only spent an hour on it like if i spent a little bit more time i could make it look really good but like squarespace uh they really make it easy for you to uh to make a website and that was don't don't use sheetshow.com as like your 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 meter for how all squarespace sites now should look, but I did that very quickly, which is a compliment to Squarespace. Um, so go to squarespace.com and use the coupon code my brother, all one word. I got my things I bought at Sheets shirt in today or, or yesterday. Pixar didn't happen. I mean, I got it in and it's a nice shirt and it looks nice and I like the design. It has a very bad smell and I don't know what the reason is for that, but I'm, I'm excited to wash Each it. Each shirt is scented like a Sheets. <laughs> Sheets smells great. Don't be an idiot. I got a message for Susan. It's from Grant. Message is this. It reads thusly. Dear Susan, happy anniversary. Wherever the brothers decide it should happen, I'd like to take this opportunity to pay the McElroys to say nice things about you. For example, they could compliment you on your blossoming video game skills, your girls show prowess, or promise you they'd never lose you in a department store. Allons-y! Um... I want Boy, to compliment you on your blossoming video game skills, but that feels like a weird, like, girl, you'll be a woman soon. I think why it's, the word, would, it's the word blossoming. Yeah. Blossoming say, creeps me out. Burgeoning. You're burgeoning video game burgeoning, skills. That's you're developing. Good. Nothing, nope. Nope. Wrong. You're uh, flowering. No. Nope. Ah, no, nope. can't. You're, um, Won't. Your cycle. <laughs> Happy anniversary, Susan. Travis, tell me about this next message. Can I read a message? Yes. This message is for Tyler, and it's from Snugglebeard. Snugglebeard says to Tyler, since we have to check Facebook to learn our anniversary, I figured our favorite brotherly trio's timely method of message delivery wouldn't be too problematic. I love you, my paycheck and a jockstrap. Wait, let me try that again. I love you, my paycheck and a jockstrap. I can't wait until all the jokes about you leaving me because I'm too old come true. Now, please take your dishes to the sink. Ooh, Tyler, that's oh, no Oh, Tyler joke. busted. Tyler, you leave those dishes out. You're going to get dried Captain Crunch on this island bowl. That's never coming Also, Snugglebeard is not even asking you to put them in the dishwasher. Take them to the sink. Just take them to the sink. That's nothing. That's, that's purgatory. Nothing. That's dishes purgatory. Uh, ha- happy, happy anniversary, you two. Hey. You like t-shirts, right? How about a mug? Are your walls looking a little bare? Visit MaxFunStore.com and cover all of these bases and more. We just added some amazing new shirts and posters. So visit today and outfit your home and torso with the freshest MaxFun merch. MaxFunStore.com Speaking of dishes, I I made that candied bacon on a... um, uh, on a cookie sheet, I I made it on a drying on a rack on a cookie nice. cooling okay. rack I was gonna say. on top of a drying sheet to let the grease drip off and let the candying process take place. And uh, I stupidly oh Justin put the dish into the put the pan into the sink oh, when I was done, God. ran oh. cool water on it, fucking instantly instantly knew. Well, I'm throwing this out. 
this is going to the trash. I need to buy a new cookie sheet today. It's co- completely gone. Completely destroyed. Just we'll it never was just get it a big, off. It was a big uh, uh, grease. A big. Uh, it was grease. Gre- no, it's not just grease. Grease I could work with, but the candy. Oh. Yeah. Like it, the candy mixed with the grease, like crystallized, and it was just like seized onto it. It's now, never coming off. Justin, I want to get into this candy. Or were you okay. doing like a uh, like a brown sugar or like a praline thing? Oh, this isn't going to be funny. No, this is a serious. I it just, doesn't I just want it to be I, funny. No, but it does. It does. It does. It's like a, in, in iTunes. Whenever you click like my brother, my brother, and me, it shows up under the comedy tab, <laughs> not under the like cooking. Well, hot cooking it can tips. be ninety six percent comedy. No, it can't. Just real brother talk. It can't. We've done no. It can't. This won't even be real brother talk. I just I, 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 listen. No, really listen. No, 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 no. Listen, 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 listen. I'm not going to care. We can talk about it. we can talk about this. I'm just not going to care very much about. Is it. this in the show? I can't tell if this. Yeah, is Yeah, yeah, for sure. All this is in the show. Or is listen, listen. In the show? Hey, hey, this is our Outback Steakhouse episode. No fucking rules, <laughs> just right. I'm not going to care talking about candy bacon. The people listening aren't going to care, and they're certainly why not don't laugh you at care? It. Like, when you care if you made it and you enjoyed it? Yeah, or but if I can you get made on, it for I can you, on, if someone gave it to you as a present. Okay, but I'm not going. I'm going to get on all recipes and look up the right way to do it. No, gonna, here's what I'm telling. Like, you can't just say a bunch of horse shit and like, expect to get away with it. The thing I'm telling you about candy bacon is that literally 80% of the recipes you read on the internet about candy bacon are a fucking lie. They will make something that is utterly inedible that you cannot consume. It's garbage. I got a recipe from a judge on Chopped, and I tried her candy bacon, and it was a nightmare. Which one? Which inedible. one? Which judge? Which judge? Alex. Alex. See, she knows what she's talking about. I would actually trust her more than I would trust you. Yeah. But not just I about cooking, that. about anything. No, but Justin's the man on the street. He's been in the shit. I mean, he isn't the, the general you. directing it from his his ivory tower. Just in the trenches. I love you, Justin. You're my brother, and you've helped me grow and mature and become the man I am today. And I will take a peer reviewed candied bacon recipe. Off of the internet that has been peer reviewed. I will get on Lexus Nexus and I will find peer reviewed with a thousands of ratings of people saying yum yum good bacon. Do you know what all the comments on every recipe of good bacon recipes are? Are there people saying, uh, this recipe is horseshit. Here's how I do it. And then there's a reply to that that's like, that will never work. That will set your house on fire. Here's okay. a real recipe. But there's for gotta bacon. be one. You are a wonderful man, but you're not the computer that wore tennis shoes. That's why I'm saying I was conducting research this morning, Griffin. If you'd listen for a second. I still wouldn't find the conversation exciting. <laughs> okay. So is At it praline point, or is it just like brown sugar? Just like oh. brown sugar okay. on top. And then I'd put it on a cookie rack, baked it in four. So you could do perfect bacon. Now, Griffin, you know how to make perfect bacon, right? Yeah, you you can make perfect bacon. Yeah. There's a full you Start proof in a cold oven. There's the bacon. Start in a cold the hub and set it at 400 and wait about 15 minutes until it's done and, and it'll be perfect. That's perfect bacon. I like a little uh, cracked black pepper and cumin on it. Welcome to my end. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Griffin's just playing Hearthstone now. Justin. Why not? Hey, no rules, just right. <laughs> why can't I play hard? If we're not going to do advice, if we're not going to do the thing, why can't the, the, now it's our Hearthstone cast. I've been really enjoying playing the priest class lately because there's a lot of card control cards, and I like to play those and really stump my enemies. Well, let's talk about Hearthstone if that's what you want to talk about. I mean, Paladin's a good way to go because then you have a lot of damage cards and healing cards. Listen. A blessing. I don't have anything. I just didn't want to talk about bacon anymore. I, that's the first. Nobody's ever. It's a, I, bacon method. has been ruined for me. Okay, I live in Austin, and so it it's like did, it's in everything. It did get kind of bacon. Got, bacon did get kind of ruined. It's like it's people. not even the it's not the food. It's not the eating it. I don't. I still get psyched if I'm like at a a hotel. I like like shitty bacon, kind of this way, <laughs> way. I like like swag weed that like snickle fritz because you can smoke a lot of it. You know what I mean? And like I like <laughs> shitty flat floppy <laughs> shitty it's bacon. The fun of smoking weed that really appeals to <laughs> yeah. You. But, but oh no, I'm high already. I like. <laughs> I just started smoking the oh, no. weed. I like. I'm so enjoying it. <laughs> I like flat, flat hotel nightmare bacon. Uh, I still get excited about that, but like I don't, I don't, eating a vegetable and like you open up a fold of it and where you expected to find the the life giving seeds inside, there's like a bacon chutney. Like I just can't get excited about that. But for me, it's not the eating of the bacon that's ruined it. It is the fact that bacon has become comedy like there there yeah. there it is it is its own sort of comedy food group where it's just like is this joke not working for you just say something about bacon <laughs> it's it's like not it's, it's not bacon's not a punchline i know it's bacon. it's thin no. pig that you fried up it's not a, it's not a, a some sort of clever play on words 
We just, I think everybody in the nation got so excited that for once we found something that could unite us instead of divide us. Like, yeah. I think that was the thing that's like, we're such a divided country anymore, politically speaking, um, and ideologically, religiously, I could go on, that we finally found one thing where we all were like, you know what, let's just put everything aside and just enjoy bacon for a second. And it was also like bad for you, but not like cigarettes, you know, not like, right. and it was like, oh, we're gonna be naughty and have some bacon today. How's that, how, I don't wanna talk about bacon anymore. How's your guys' summer? I haven't done shit yet. Okay, moving on to Justin. Uh, Fourth of July, you know. Um, okay, so that I well, work. I wanted I, it's the reason I want to do some kind of vacation thing, but it's hard because like one, it's not like we have the summers off from school. Like it's it's not that much different from any other month. And now that I am a professional podcaster, i.e., unemployed, it's not really like I have a job to take a vacation from. So it's really just spending money at that point. TV has led me to believe that La La Land is like a vacation 24 hours a day. I will say that there is like, uh, if you've ever been on Atlas Obscura, which is really awesome and I highly recommend it, the website, there is like a thousand like cool places to go in in uh, Los Angeles that cost nothing that are like, here's a weird little adventure day. But that doesn't really feel like a vacation. That feels like, I just don't wanna be home for three hours. Uh, and so, like, I don't know. I'm thinking about going to Disneyland, you guys. I'm 31 years old. haven't been to Disneyland yet. You have been to Disneyland. No, I've been to Disney yet. World. I've been to Disney okay. World, Griffin. Yeah, I've always wondered about Disneyland. I feel like it would be just different enough from Walt Disney World that I would kind of get messed up. Yeah. Like, it would kind of be hard to, like, I would keep feeling like I was in a dissociative state or something. Um, I've been thinking about taking a swaycation. And let me know if this isn't <laughs> funny. But it's... Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, I'm gonna go, like, get lunch with my friend Sway. You know that I met Sway once when I was in college, and, um... Yeah, you never let us forget it. We had lunch. I had lunch with Sway, and then the next day, I had lunch with John Roberts. Pretty much the best two days. Um, it, it goes in order those two days, and then the best day ever that I mentioned earlier in the show that I can't remember what I said. Uh, <laughs> listen, I've had a pretty good life. I, uh, I, uh, uh, I like going out with uh sway like different events and stuff like that yeah but the one thing i don't like about it is that he always expects you to reserve a spot with the the hang he sounds like those really annoying rsvs's the yeah. responde si vous sway yeah and he makes he makes you uh he makes you uh fill those out and return them to him before you can get a good and hang then on. we uh <laughs> <laughs> and then when you're on a uh a cruise ship and it capsizes, and then you and he are the only two survivors, and you um, you swim through the, the the sunken channels and hallways of the ship to make it to the radio room to uh, put out a, a Save Our Sway dispatch. <laughs> I uh, And then he always talks about that uh, the 90s R&B, two man on 90s R&B group that he was in right before they made it huge, and then they changed the name uh, from Kid and Sway yeah. To kid and play, and then it was like, and they just cut him out of the. Cut of him out of the whole what are the like, odds that ninety percent of our listeners have no idea who you're talking about? Oh, a hundred percent. Okay, great. No, sorry, a hundred percent of our listeners know exactly who we're talking about. He's fucking sway. <laughs> um, do you guys want a Yahoo? What? What do you mean? A what? A what? Who? <laughs> a what? I, I'm worried people are listening to this going like, are they just going to change the whole show? Is this? I can't stress this enough. This isn't us being lazy. This isn't us like not doing the the pre pro work. I'm looking at an email full of questions, just ripe. Ooh, juicy, juicy extra questions. Extra questions. There's actually extra I questions. Had eight questions this week instead of. Six. I have like nine yahoos, and and we got them all together, and then at some point we just made this unconscious decision just to just to neglect them. If we don't go the full hour, like right. Do you remember that time we went to see the Reds game and it started raining? And everybody else cleared out of the stadium and we're standing in the hallways waiting for the rain to blow over. And we were like, we're going to stay in our seats the whole time and be cool dudes. And yeah. then lightning struck a flagpole on the opposite side of the ballpark, at which point after sitting in the rain for an hour, then we got up and went and stood in the hallways with everyone else. Do you want to be left. that guy? We left because we were wet and then the, the rain stopped and everybody else got to enjoy the game. I think we yeah, also stopped at Skyline because we also wanted to shit ourselves on the way. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely, 
One of the best things about going to a Reds game, so we live three hours away from Cincinnati in Huntington, uh, is three hours away from Cincinnati. So it would be a, a day trip, right? So we would, so dad would say, hey, boys, let's go. And sometimes mom would come too, but but a lot, I remember it being a few times it was just like the four of us, and it, it would be like, let's make a day of it, go see a Reds game. So we'd drive up in the morning. We'd get there, you know, we'd get the mini Reds bat, and we'd watch the game. Eat Justin would fill out an application our, for a credit card. That God, almost always happened. That. I did do that once. I uh, started myself on a road to financial ruin that I'm still trying to escape from. I was I was 16 years old, and I got one to get a free Reds baseball cap. Uh, hi, Justin. They sell those. Hi, Dad. You had to co-sign. Like, fuck everybody. So that was that was a great thing. And then as we would leave the stadium, and I had my, like, I, I can't wait to get a credit card. I wonder what that's like. Uh, as we're leaving, still on that credit card, credit card high uh we would always stop at skyline chili and then have a three-hour drive home it was just like a fart rocket it was like do you want to do you want to do you want to sous vide yourself in farts do you want to fart ceviche here in our toyota corolla like let's just do it let's see what we would get out and we open the doors when we got home and the outside of the car would just be like unpainted tarnished metal (laughs) The Reds game was red. God, baseball games are so expensive because you got to get the tickets, you got to get the kids the souvenirs, you have to have the seats of the car reupholstered and then burn. Ah, <laughs> uh, farts. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what the joke is because the chili would make you fart. That's what I was saying. Let's see. We talked about safety patrol. We talked about cold showers. What else is on your list? I did get a credit card. Travis, thank you for reminding me. The first credit card I ever got was at a fucking Reds game for a baseball cap. What was the limit? Do you remember the credit limit on that? $16,000. Okay, at first, no, no bullshit. At first, it was $500. Okay. That's good for a kid. I'd let my 16-year-old have a $500 credit card. And then I got a letter that it had been extended to (laughs) $6,000. And I never. And I never this told is why we it. had the credit collapse, everybody. <laughs> because yeah, we because were giving just six thousand dollar credit cards to sixteen year olds. That's I, high. That is higher than my current credit card limit. That's insane. You know what? It's, I can't get a insane. credit card now. But because 16. of Justin, <laughs> because of how bad Justin goofed up. Six thousand dollars. What? Yeah. Six thousand. You 16- might as well have had a blank check at that point. That right. is the movie Blank Check. It's Basically. red. It's red card. That's insanity. Six thousand dollars. I um. But you know what? To be fair, I used that credit card to pay uh, my tuition at Marshall, and I used it to buy books, which is what I told Linda at Universal Credit Union when I got that debt consolidation loan. <laughs> What's up? Really? I actually, was... I used it to buy an electric guitar and lots of Taco Bell. And <laughs> tons and tons and tons of hero clicks. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, put it on the card. I'll never have to pay this back. That's adult Justin's problem. I am adult Justin. Thank you for your uh, waste. I got a, I got a call from a... Uh, 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 there's a lot of bad information out there about credit cards. <laughs> I, got a, I, I got it in my head... Okay, so I saw one of those commercials for one of those, like, we'll take care of your debt. No problem. We'll talk to the creditors so you don't have to. And I was like, well, that sounds, like, really great. And, and they were like, we'll get you your thing for pennies on the dollar. And um, the the w- I looked it up. I Googled it. And I was like, what do these companies do? Because, like, that seems kind of crazy. And they, th- what I basically said is, like, what they tell you is just to basically stop paying. And then eventually – the like the credit company will get so desperate that they'll sell the loan to somebody else and they'll search you out for like less money right because they just want to get it off the books at that point so they'll sell your debt and then that person who's a real dick is going to come for you hard but for less money and i read that and i thought well that's what they do i could do that right now so i just stopped paying it (laughs) i in the first fiscally responsible decision I ever made I cut out the middleman and just <laughs> stopped paying my credit card because I realized I was never going to pay it down so I'm just going to stop it's, paying it. It sounds like you also attempted to cut out the upper man <laughs> so cut out just, just, the man. just you, the lower man leaving only me, the lower man to deal with this and I didn't do anything and for months it worked fine Yeah. and then I got a very angry call from a gentleman who wanted some money 
right there. But that was for your drugs thing. That was <laughs> that thing. was actually yeah. He was collecting taxes on Balls Out United, and then we had an extensive Out United. Listen to the words that you say. <laughs> I can't. I I'm trying to be honest here on our podcast. I I could have gussied it up and made it maybe made it like a cool name. Speaking like of Cool Microsoft. Dudes Inc. Speaking of gussying up and also your Balls Out United phase, I want to talk to you about those frosted tips. As long as we're just like, as long as Gosh, this I is just like, like I don't have enough time. I think as long as we've been like doing the Justin McElroy revelation hour, let's just go ahead now, and dive deep into those frosted I'm, tips. I'm going to speak for Justin here. The frosted tips were a mistake, Griffin, because you see his girlfriend at the time is getting highlights. He was there at the salon with her. What's that? They had a little bit of leftover, uh, you know, frosting dye. And they and he said, "Well, I can't oh remember. My Juice, God. did someone ask you, or did you volunteer?" It's been lost of time. Been lost of time. No one will ever know. Okay, so he you, volunteered that uh, he wanted. He was like, "Oh, give me some uh, tips, like, uh, like, like uh, Justin Timberlake." And they're like, "You want to get a little bit more chicken?" Hey, hey, my name's also Justin. This sounds good to me. And then, so what they did was they put, uh, I would say, like a uh, twenty-six. Very defined points of frosted color in his hair, if I remember it looked, correctly. It looked very good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that I had a phase before the frosted tips phase where, you know, the oh my God, I can't believe I'm going to say this. Yes, yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. Oh God, this is a rough one. Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> rougher, rougher than you getting couples frosted tips yes. that's worse than i ever could have imagined <laughs> it's rougher than that you know those cans of hairspray that you use around halloween mm -hmm. to co color your hair a certain color just as a goof yeah i had a period for about two weeks in high school where i was split spraying uh some of that blonde spray into my hair <laughs> to give myself a different look a different blonder look it, it fucked my hair up so bad because it is not meant to be a daily application. <laughs> he uh, used it how much? Get him to the doctor. Yeah, go to the hair doctor right now. Justin. Justin. Griffin. Last year, you had a beautiful baby girl. You and Sydney yeah. had a beautiful baby girl, Charlie. She's a, she's a wonderful child. I'm a fan. It's I am too. I like her new stuff and her old stuff. The whole catalog. It is a miracle that you were able to produce her, that this ritual that you just described did not burn and salt your dick <laughs> completely clean off. Um, thank you, Griffin. I was pretty excited. That, I'm excited for you. Now that I know this, that's a that's a miracle child. Oh, what a mm. miracle baby. I'm, I'm going to try and canonize her for sainthood because she should not exist. And Justin, can you tell me, did you get, did you do all of these hair shenanigans before or after the credit card? I'm just trying to de develop a timeline of times I, think, I could have I think, stopped Yeah, you. Travis, I see what you're getting at. I think that I, ha uh, once I did have, once I did have a net worth of s roughly $6,000, <laughs> I felt like I had to live up to that lifestyle. You know what I mean? I couldn't just roll into the hottest clubs with oh, my with man. my my brown, boring, plain Jane hair. I had to go in with a three dollar can of costume shop blonde spray on my on my uh, locks. The to money try to really changed my... you. This has been a rough episode for you, Justin. I mean, I didn't come out of it looking great. If that's what you're getting at, maybe I mean, you should like... get some blonde tips. Well, Travis, I've kind of been down that road. Have you ever thought about shaving your head into like some kind of a uh, monk's tonsure? Oh my God, yes, 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 Justin, uh, Justin, you have lived such a uh, wonderful, wonderful again? life. I did do that, uh, but that was for a sh that was a, for a show, and that was actually laziness because I couldn't commit to putting a skull cap on every night. I was Friar Lawrence and Romeo and Juliet, and I had to get I I shaved a tonsure in there, and then the worst part was, um. Uh, that I ha after if you shave a tonsure into your head, the hair is never gonna catch up. Like it doesn't work that way. You You're like always donut. gonna have, it. yeah, yeah, exactly, like a perma donut. So I was like, well, I've got to shave it off. And let me tell you, bald Justin is a look. <laughs> the bet the best way I can describe it is, if Uncle Fester and Pugsley <laughs> had a baby. <laughs> That was me. I had like the fat, stubby, pugsley body, but the Uncle Fester head. <laughs>
<laughs> Uncle Pugster was <laughs> Un- Uncle Pugster was me. Oh man. Did Don't you, you guys have anything you want to like get off? I your haven't chest? done anything even the 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 tamest thing that you've said so far is worse than my worst thing. I think I had a rat tail when I was like seven. But that's fine, you're seven. I was you seven. Do anything when you're seven. <laughs> I did all this for you guys. I I fjorded the path for you. So you would, you know, so you wouldn't have to make these same mistakes. Oh, I, I will also say this towards uh, my minkusing. For high school, my junior homecoming, I wanted to have my hair like Sean from Boy Meets World. So I parted it down the middle, grew it out. Mission did accomplished, not, by the way. Did not look like <laughs> Sean from Boy Meets World. But I did wear a leather jacket to homecoming uh, and in all of my pictures. God, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's really good. That was a solid moment. I think I still have that somewhere. I, when I was in high school, um, my girlfriend went to get highlights, so I said, let me just get some of that extra <laughs> goo and put it right up in my stuff, and then we'll get matching hair color. Oh, I got confused. <laughs> I do think you licensed that one. I think you repurposed that from my life story. <sighs> I have another embarrassing one. I'll just, I'll just trot this out real quick. As long as we're just like leaving it all in the court. Uh, when I was in my freshman year of college, the same girlfriend who I got frosted tips with, uh, I wanted to surprise her for her birthday. Uh, and I, oh boy. And uh, uh, I wanted to do something that she had talked about for a long time, but I thought just never had the courage to do. I am terrified right now. I'm I'm, legi- I'm legitimately moving away from my computer and microphone. <laughs> Don't move it. Just hang there with me. Uh 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 who uh, okay i'm just gonna commit i'm just gonna go for it so i made her put on a blindfold and i drove her to uh davidson's music which had was a combination cd store and piercing place and i brought her in the front door removed the blindfold and say said uh th- uh this is my girlfriend and she would like to get her belly button pierced please because Why? she had talked about it for so yeah. long. <laughs> she left a girlfriend-shaped dust cloud as she vacated the premises. That's the, that is the craziest thing I've <laughs> ever... That is... I know. That is In a, retrospect... No, no, no. That's something a serial killer does. <laughs> I thought it was a grand gesture. You were I, I, okay. Appropriately enough, you were doing it to a high school girl, which is what a serial killer would also. That's also and you the blindfolded her. Target. If you had said, "This is my girlfriend," I'm going to murder her. In front I'm not. Of you. I'm not kidding. Everything about the, the blindfold, the the dual purpose establishment where you took her, the surprise piercing, all of these things combined are a serial killer. If it wasn't you telling me this, I would be calling the fucking police right now. That's the craziest. Serial thing. season that's two. The craziest thing I've ever heard. Happy birthday. Here's a hole. <laughs> I'm going to put a hole in you. Happy birthday. I'm going to put a hole. This stranger CD, this used CD salesman is going to put a hole in you like there's a hole in all his CDs. While I look at this Hooting the Blowfish album and consider whether or not to buy a second copy. I am. Um, she had talked about it for a while, so I just thought that she wanted it done. But by a stranger and on a surprise date and time. We're not together. (laughs) (laughs) Didn't work out. Can we end the episode now? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I I can't think of a better, Uh, more interesting way for me to walk away from the flaming wreckage of my life. So that's in digital. I mean, this is digitally archived now. Yeah. This is in the cloud. This is in the library. I can't get any of these memories back. Um, Listen, this next week, advice, I promise. This is a Griffin yeah. McElroy this guarantee. Is, yeah, well, we had advice. It's just reverse advice this time. Yeah. Just don't do anything that we've talked about in the second half of this program. You will be aces. I mean, don't aces. do anything we've talked about for the last 259 episodes. Right, but still. I, okay, we need, We really need to start the episode now. Here we okay. go. All right. All right. Uh, I'm Justin McElroy. A lot of people have been asking, uh, speaking of when we're going to start, the Totino's thing, 100% true. We're doing that. That's a real thing. Hashtag MBMBAM Totino's. We have gotten so many awesome already. I would say at least 35 usable questions for the Totino's episode. It's very uh, exciting to we've me. We've gotten hundreds of Totino's flavored yahoos, which I'm very, very excited to, to dig into. What date is that episode going to be on It's going to be uh, July 22nd, I believe. 
Awesome. And that's a bonus, by the way. Like, we're not, this is not like the new direction of My Brother, My Brother and Me is like sponsored sponsored episode no we'll, we'll put that up in the in the middle of the week or is it gonna go up also on monday it goes up on the on uh wednesday what else do we want to talk about the midwest or the pacific northwest shows yes we've got uh well we've got three shows coming up but we've got two with tickets still available uh we're doing shows august 28th 29th 30th on the 29th we're going to be in seattle um on the 30th we're going to be in vancouver Tickets are still available for the, both of those. On the 28th, we're going to be in Portland, but that one's sold out. Uh, if you go to bit.ly forward slash MBMBAM Seattle and bit.ly forward slash VANMBMBAM, you can find those tickets. It's assigned seating, so the longer you wait, uh, the less good your seats will be. Um, and they are, they are selling. They are, they are selling. There are a lot of seats that are gone. There are still plenty of good seats available, uh, and uh, make sure you, you don't. Which sounds like a line, but really isn't. Yeah, there, I would not be surprised if seats, they're but I, if but they're don't sold out wait before. Much longer. Yeah. Um, I hope. God, I hope so. And if you if you are going to be attending those shows, go ahead and start sending us questions now. Make sure you put either Portland, Seattle, or Vancouver in the subject line, depending on which one you're going to be at. Um, and just we'll also probably do live audience questions. Um. But or I'm maybe say, no advice at all. Maybe we'll just talk about our our jobs and the horrible, horrible things we did for our high school girlfriends. Yes. Do you, uh, I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album, Putting the Days to Bed. It's a great album. I've been uh, I've been listening to my old uh, mixtapes from when I had my college radio show, and there's a lot of Long Winters on there. So it's a it's a good music option for any time of life. Well put. Um, we've also made some updates and some changes to our YouTube page so that it's a little bit easier to navigate. Um, if you go to, you know, youtube.com slash MBMBAM, uh, we have lots of animated shorts. We have a couple live show clips. Um, so go check it out. Go listen to all the other amazing Max Fun podcasts. Um, there's far too many to mention, uh, but they're all incredible. I highly recommend them. Go check out Things I Bought at Sheets, Justin's hit YouTube video series. Uh, and go listen, to, go listen to Trends Like These. That's a, a new show that Travis does. Uh, with his buddy Brent, where they talk about inter- internet trends and important uh, buzzwords, uh, and it's really great. Uh, go go check that out. Instead of a Yahoo, a final Yahoo, because that certainly wouldn't be appropriate. Uh, I'm trying to think of like something embarrassing about me that I can tell, and I really am having a hard time playing. You know what that. I wish we could find is one of like the Boy Detective recordings. Oh my God, Justin and I was in, we were in a band called Boy Detective, and it was the greatest band ever. See, I'm not even embarrassed about that. I just haven't done one yet, and I, 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 my life can't be ha- completely devoid of embarrassing moments. When I was in high school, I, uh, we had to do lip syncs, and uh, my song that I chose to lip sync was uh, "Sweet Home Alabama," <laughs> and I wore a flannel shirt and had a hobo bindle over my shoulder, <laughs> and I just spent the entire song walking back and forth on the stage, <laughs> mouthing the lyrics, and uh, with my thumb out, and I just walked back and forth, mouthing the entire, li- like lip syncing the entirety of Sweet Home Alabama. Oh, I mean, Griffin uh, and I also did Walk the Dinosaur, where he played the dinosaur. But that was adorable. He I was, was fucking adorable, old. and we won second place too. See? So like, yeah, I don't think anything oh, bad. Has- I, when I was in seventh grade, uh, our final project for English class was we had to write a book, and I did write my own sort of. Uh, sort of like uh, Tales from the Mos Eisley and Cantina, sort of extended universe uh, Pokemon story that I had to read aloud in front of the entire class. <laughs> and then later that later that day, Jack Hoover speared me into the mud and ruined my only copy of the transcript. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew there was something Pokemon related, but I forgot that I pinned my own sort of masterpiece. It was. It was uh, <laughs> We're all disasters. Oh, I'm okay now, because now I get paid to write about Pokemon. Fuck the haters. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the haters. And kiss your dad square on the lips. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. 
Hi, everybody. I'm Justin McElroy. And I'm Dr. Sydney McElroy. Every Tuesday, we bring you Sawbones, a marital tour of misguided medicine, a show about all the dumb, weird, terrible ways that we've tried to fix each other over the years. You know, some light summer listening. Maybe you want to hear about yogurt enemas or why we tried to eat mummies for a while or why drinking cholera diarrhea sounded like a good idea. That and so much more is waiting for you every Tuesday right here on the Maximum Fun Network with Sawbones, a marital tour of misguided medicine.